Kill me, you donkey. No! The black piece always dies first, so you kill me, then die. White traded his dark square bishop to weaken black's king side defense and expose his king so that he can include his queen later on and checkmate black, he's also advancing his h-pawn forward with the intent of sacrificing it to open the file for his rook and brilliantly end the game, this is a classical way for white to counter black's king's indian defense set up with his samus variation, which is one of the best counters white could have used and he almost managed to win the game, however with a sequence of spectacular moves and brilliant counterplay on white's queen side black managed to turn the game around. The most noticeable move was the dazzling rook sacrificed by black near the end of the game that was used to position the king on the b-file. Strike me down with all of your royal hatred. Okay. Then black's queen and horsey gracefully closed off the game after a couple of moves and forced white to resign before they could deliver their stunning checkmate combo. This spectacular game was played between Vladimir Bajarov and Eduard Gufeld in 1973 and Gufeld was the victor in the game thanks to his innovative and graceful gameplay, which is also the reason for ranking this game as the third best chess game in the 70s along with dubbing it as Gufeld's Mona Lisa. White opens the game with pawn to d4, opting for a queen's pawn opening. Black responds with pawn to g6, aiming to fianchetto his bishop in his next move. Black developed his bishop to g7, allowing white to take control of the center in exchange for long-term central pressure in the later stages of the game. Black plays knight to f6, eyeing the center and preparing for potential counter-attacks. White secures his central pawn on e4 by playing pawn to f3, this is the famous Samus variation which is known to be one of the best counters against the king's Indian defense. Black castles king side, removing his king from his vulnerable central position and completing the king's Indian defense. Until this rook's move both sides were developing their pieces normally, with this move black intends to initiate an attack on the queen side with his pawns, aiming to open the b-file for his rook to get him involved in a crushing attack. White responds with queen to d2, creating a battery and intending to move his bishop to h6 in his next move to trade off both pieces with the hopes of getting his queen closer to black's king. As expected, white invaded black's king side with his bishop, setting his plan in motion, in this position the recommended moves for black are bishop takes h6 and when white's queen recaptures we use the fact that the queen is now offsided due to the recapture to strike in the middle of the board with our e5 pawn and break through the center. However this continuation is recommended only because white still hasn't completely developed and his king remains uncastled, which means that a central attack by black will be lethal if he manages to break through white's defense because then the white king will have no protection. Black continues with his own queen side attack and pushes his pawn to b5, countering white's king side attack and aiming to open the b-file for his rook. White ignores his queen side and advances his h-pawn forward. White's plan is to break through Black's king side as fast as possible to deliver checkmate, this is why he allows Black to press on further with his attack and open the b-file for his rook to get him involved. To counter White's flank attack Black also initiates an attack on the center, this is the right response in this situation, action in the center is the best counter against a flank attack. White once again ignores this attack by Black and forces the exchange of bishops, slowly but surely weakening the defense of Black's king side. White brilliantly moves his pawn to h5, aiming to sacrifice it with the intent of removing one of the king's side pawns who are there for the king's protection and to open the h-file so that he can get his rook involved in the attack in order to create opportunities for potential checkmate threats when white brings his queen in the attack, it's important to note that the strongest and most sensible move would be the simple capture on c4 by the pawn, after a pawn trade on g6 and after the queen moves to h6 the king can then fall back to g8. Instead Black decides to put his king to h8 which turns out to be a fatal mistake that almost cost him the game. White brilliantly placed his horsey on d5, aiming for an exchange of knights. Black's f6 horsey is important because it defends the h7 square, White's idea is to bring his queen on the h-file and checkmate Black by putting his queen to h7 and at the moment the only piece defending that square is the horsey. Say goodnight! Black captures White's c4 pawn opening the b-file and continuing with his pressure on the queen side. <coughs> Meanwhile white continues with his attack on the king side and captures on g6. <coughs> Black captures back and white's queen menacingly arrives at h6 as expected, now we see many brilliant threats looming over black's king in this position, 
the obvious one is white taking black's horsey with his knight and checkmating black in his next move, but he could also capture on g6 with his queen, using the pin on the pawn to his advantage. There is only one brilliant move that saves black and gives enough time to create counterplay in this position and he finds it. This move is horsey to h5, this spectacular move shuts down the h file, halting all of white's checkmate threats, giving black enough time to initiate a strong attack of his own by advancing his rook to b2 in his next move. At the moment white is clearly winning, he only needs to remove the horsey from the h file and take on h7 with his queen to deliver the checkmate, but he has to be patient here and prioritize his king's safety before he attempts to kick the knight away with his g2 pawn and castle queen side, this castle protects the weak b2 pawn and in his next move white can advance his g2 pawn without having to worry about his king's safety and queen side. However in the game white decides to move his pawn to g4 and attacks the knight prematurely, allowing black to invade his queen side. White picks up black's horsey with his pawn, now eyeing black's g6 pawn with the intent of taking it in his next move and clearing the path for his rook. With this spectacular move black closes the h file and severely restricts the white queen's movement. White slides his rook over to g1, the idea white has is to capture the pawn and then mate on g7 with his queen. However after rook g1 we see another brilliant move from black which is pawn to g4. This spectacular move is both offensive and defensive at the same time, this brilliant move attempts to close off the g-file and opens the way for the black queen with the possibility of checking white and invading with his pieces into white's territory even further. This amazing castle tucks the king away from the probable h4 check by the queen and attacks the rook simultaneously, in this position both kings are exposed but it's surprisingly hard to get to them. The complexity of this position is dazzling and both players are walking on eggshells because even the smallest mistake will without a doubt lead into a checkmate. White moves his horsey to f4, the plan white has is to place his knight on g6 in his next move with check and swarm in on black's king with his pieces to deliver the checkmate. Even though black is able to remove one of the knights the other horsey swiftly takes its place, in this position black is forced to trade his rook. This is the only move that saves him from white's attack, however white still seems to have the advantage because not only is he up material but he also threatens to capture the g4 pawn, getting his bishop out of the way and bringing his rooks on the f file to invade on black's side of the board and initiate a soul crushing attack. Black advances his c pawn forward, this is another brilliant move by black because of his rook on the second rank. When a rook cuts off a king's escape route there is always a possibility of coordination with the pawn and knight if they manage to position themselves correctly and initiate a spectacular and unavoidable attack. In this position black has this opportunity and if he manages to position his pieces correctly in time it will lead to a beautiful checkmate. Black brilliantly moves his horsey to b4, creating a checkmate threat with rook to a1. White responds to the threat by moving his king. Black moves his bishop to e6. This is a brilliant sacrifice by black because it intends to get the queen to the b-file and deliver the checkmate when all of his pieces get involved in the attack. Knight to d3 is the only good move in this position because it gains time for black to bring his queen to the b-file and attacks white's queen simultaneously. It's important to move the knight before bringing the queen over to the file because if black moves his queen to b8 right away white can immediately move his queen to f6 and win the game. In addition knight to d3 can also create a blockade on the d3 square if the rook captures the horsey. If white were to take the knight with his rook then we have a spectacular forced mate in 3 moves. This is how it would have looked like. Now black slides his queen over to b8. If white moved his king to c2 in this position we have another amazing mate combination that we'll showcase. This knight's move blocks the vital defense from the diagonal, along with defending the critical c3 pawn and this would have allowed black to mate white as you see on screen. White found the only game saving move and blocked the file with his bishop, but it's not enough to halt black's attack. White plays the only king move in this position that doesn't lead to an immediate mate, however after a dazzling rook sacrifice black is able to win the game by forcing white to forfeit in this position, we see that this horsey cuts the way of white's queen and protects the c3 pawn, the same scenario we explored earlier has manifested itself in front of us, white resigned in this position because if he were to move his king back to c2 then the queen will gracefully circle around the board and will eventually force the king all the way up to c4 and we would have had a spectacular finish with queen to b5 checkmate.
Gefeld played this chess game with grace and brilliance hence why it's dubbed as the Mona Lisa game along with being ranked as the third best chess game in the 1970s.